semester to teach us some of what she knows. So, um, thanks everybody for coming to uh, one of the awkward lectures. I guess uh, I think next semester we've done the same damn thing where we <laughs> scheduled a lecture in our series during reading break, and uh, we've put a break in our schedule when you guys have regular classes. So I'm not sure yet which class we're going to do twice next semester, but uh, that'll this this will happen again. Um, just to give you an idea of the context of today's lecture, uh, the medicinal products, medicinal cannabis products, is a separate lecture next semester. So we'll get into uh, you know some of the specifics of how to make the products at that point, and. Uh, there is another lecture on the health impacts of cannabis use, which is distinct from this. So today's lecture from Gail is, is primarily about you know, medical uses of, of cannabis as aside from those two other areas, you know, the way this could be covered uh, uh, through an entire semester. Um, but we're cutting a lot down. So without further ado, thank you very much, Gail, for teaching us today. First picture that we have is um, Montel Williams. He's a medicinal user of cannabis from the United States. He has a TV show and he has multiple sclerosis, um, which is one of the uh, uh, more uh, recognized illnesses that cannabis is beneficial for. Um, even though it is quite wide, um, has been in the past, it is again quite widely medicinally recognized. I believe there's only seven um, federally licensed medicinal cannabis users in the all, all of the United States. <coughs> um, the most common and longest standing form of um, using cannabis is um, by burning it. And the easiest way of uh, containing and not wasting your herb is by rolling it into a joint or putting it into a pipe and smoking it. Although originally the benefits would probably have been discovered by people sitting around a, f a fire and just throwing some of the plant on the fire and noticing that they had a really good sleep that night or got really hungry and wanted to eat a lot. Things like that. So, and indeed the original hotboxing was burning incense in small canvas tents. Um, myself, I started using cannabis when I was 13 years of age. I had uh, quite a few older brothers and sisters so they introduced it to me. And as the um, years went by, within the first two years, I started joking that I was going to donate my life to um, science and the medicinal uses of cannabis. Because right from the very first hope that I had um, a sense of, it was close to, um, I guess it was close to a spiritual revelation. I finally felt at one with myself and the rest of the universe. I still had a lot of physical problems, but um, I was able to deal with them a lot easier. And at a very young age, I realized that this plant was helping me cope with my life. Um, I was sick most of my life as a young girl. Um, I didn't have a much of an immune system, so I had colds all the time. And um, as I grew up and learned things, I also realized that I had a uh, liver disorder, too. 
So these are some of the reasons why cannabis felt so good to me at a very young age. It's because I already had problems and as science has discovered now we have cannabinoid receptors throughout our whole bodies as well as our brains. So the plant, when you um, ingest the active ingredients, it can go to wherever in your body is most needed. So, to me, it, um, it started out as a joke, but very early uh, um, I decided that it really wasn't a joke, and this was a, um, a plant that had been very badly misrepresented. I paid attention when, um, when I was very young and had to go to church, and some of my first arguments were... Uh, that if God created us this plant, why should it be illegal? I found with um, nervousness when I was a teenager, my uh, system wasn't completely developed. It calmed my nerves, so I was able to talk to other people. I didn't vibrate all the time, which is very disturbing when you're trying to listen to teachers and whatnot. Um, I also had extremely um, severe menstrual cramps and, and heavy bleeding. And uh, a lot of times using cannabis was the only way I would be able to be able to get out of bed and go to school. Um, indeed, a few times when I couldn't get out of bed, it was my sister who came and fed me a few puffs that allowed me to finally get up. So, Along with this came, um, because of my the state of my health, I knew that I, if I was going to have children, I would have to have them at a very early age. And indeed I did. I um, was 18 when I had my first son. I was sick with him morning, noon, evening, and night. I had morning sickness 24 hours a day. Um, I was quite small to start with and I didn't gain a lot of weight. Um, I didn't like the thought too much of using drugs while I was pregnant, but if I didn't use cannabis I would go for days without eating, usually up to about three, and I'd be able to finally eat a little bit of something. And I realized that wasn't good for his health, so um, to compromise I just kept using cannabis and was able to uh, not be as sick. Uh, the more I used, the less sick I was, the more I was able to sleep, the more I was able to eat. I gradually started gaining weight and had a very normal, healthy delivery. Um, likewise for both of my, so I used it for both of my sons. And shortly after my second son, um, because of uh, another illness called pelvic, um, pelvic inflammatory disease, which they didn't know very much about at the time. Um, they only knew to test women and not their partners, so my husband kept reinfecting me. They kept feeding me antibiotics, and that was destroying my stomach, as well as my immune system further. and. Um, it was severely painful, a lot of cramps and infections um, in my uterus. And so again, using cannabis helped me to cope with all the pain. One of the reasons smoking works so well is that um, you can use exactly as... Let me picture, sorry. Oh, there we go, sorry. Why smoking works...